in this video, I'll be going over my entire Notion setup that helped me to crack the code from medical school and enabled me to study half as much and yet learn and remember twice as fast. What's cooking sapiens? Welcome back to another video. So before we get into the entire Notion system, there are three key principles that I have to go through. And if you are only interested in the Notion thing, then you can skip to this time frame. However, I would highly recommend to really try and understand these three important principles as well. Because for me personally, had it not been for these three key ideas, then the Notion setup would not have really made any difference to me or in my case at all. The first principle is that lectures are mostly a waste of time. And there are several reasons for this. The first reason is that lectures are mostly passive. Um, I mean, you what, what exactly is a lecture? A lecture is basically a monologue, a guy or a teacher standing there and talking to you nonstop for the next 45 minutes. And you, for some reason, are expected to grab or absorb all the knowledge that is being conveyed to you in those 45 minutes. And on top of that, when you're having three, four, five, or even six lectures, every single day from Monday to Friday and you are expected to sit there like for from 8 in the morning till 12 p.m. or even 1 p.m. and expected to learn and recall everything that is literally complete nonsense that is just BS um, I mean how many times has this happened to you that you come back home from a day full of lectures and then you're like okay now I know everything from this topic I have I have learned everything for me zero it never happened Mostly, I would come back home and think, man, oh, I don't remember anything from these lectures, like, except for maybe like a couple of points. So I have to sit down and restudy basically everything that we had to go through in those lectures anyway. And that means that I'm essentially using double the amount of time on learning one topic, as opposed to if I was not attending those lectures, then I could instead sit at home from 8 in the morning till 12 p.m. and learn all that stuff by myself in a much more efficient way. The number of minutes and hours you are spending on the lecture is not proportional to the learning value that you are getting from that. Um, I mean, I made this whole calculation where I calculated how much time I was actually saving every semester by not attending lectures. And per semester, I was saving five days, like five complete days of just listening to a lecture. That is incredible. So by saving all that time, I could really combine those five days with two weekends. And that would mean I could get 10 to 11 days of vacation every single semester simply by not attending lectures and not even compromising on the learning value. The second principle is that notes are ineffective. I don't care how much hate I will get for this. I mean, I have, I'm used to it. But really, notes are the most ineffective way of studying. All that notes actually do is that they push you into this illusion that, okay, today I have studied really well because I have made 20 pages of complete waste notes. That makes you feel like a champion that you have mastered this topic and you have made such incredible notes all this with all these colors and diagrams. But in reality, you haven't really learned anything, guys. And that has happened to me like multiple times. Well, I have been there. Trust me, I have been using notes like for two years in medical school, nonstop. Every single day I was taking notes from my medical textbooks. Uh, but in the end, I realized that, man, this is just nonsense. I would rather spend my time on much more efficient techniques such as active recall, making mind maps, space repetition, flashcards and all that stuff rather than just making notes. And I have made a complete video about this, which you can watch over here. The third principle is that you only need two learning materials or learning resources. Now, we medical students tend to overcomplicate and overthink every single thing. We want to be using all these multiple resources, tons of books, really, to see how the information is being taught to us or explained to us. We like to use all these different kinds of online platforms and stuff. But in reality, my friends, you only need two things to breeze through medical school. The first one is lecture PDFs. In the lecture PDF, the professor has basically done the entire work for you. He has made the notes for you. He has filtered what information is important from the book and then put that information in a PowerPoint for you already. So the work is done. The notes for you have been made. You have been told that the material, that the stuff that is inside the PowerPoints is what really is important, right? Even though 
the professor or the teacher might say that okay guys you need to study a lot more than just my powerpoints but still as a matter of fact what really is important is obviously on the pdf right because the teacher would only include those things that are clinically important that are relevant that are important for the exam right so let your pdfs give you a direction for studying by filtering the important from the non-important stuff the second and final resource that you actually need are case books i mean how many times have you heard doctors say that i learned so much more medicine by actually practicing medicine by treating patients like that itself was a learning experience right most doctors say that they learn more by working like six months compared to six years of medical school and that's because medicine is actually just learned by solving cases by treating patients by seeing new problems that's how we learn medicine so yeah if you solve cases by using a case book you will already breeze through your exam that is something i can really guarantee and also save a lot of time and now let's move on to the notion setup which helped me to crack the code for studying in mbbs so notion is a free app if you do not already know and by the way this video is not sponsored at all i've been using notion like since the third year of medical school and this has literally revolutionized the entire game for me so the idea here is that you have to think of it in three chunks the first one is how to study the second one is how to revise for exams the third one is how to catch up on topics and lectures that you have fallen behind on so the first part how to study so let's say i have the module the fourth module right here right so i divide this module into the different subjects that we have in this module so the first one would be neurology and sorry about the norwegian language um, i mean medical school in norway is norwegian so i have to make notes in norwegian as well so the first subject is neurology the second one is i the third subject is ent then pharmacology right so i have divided into the different subjects now let's have a look at the first subject neurology now i further divided the neurology subject in all the different various topics that i need to know for my neurology exam oops um so let's have a look at by for example epilepsy right um here i have divided my entire the, that this in this single topic into the, the different parts that are inside this topic so the definitions the differential diagnosis um the like uh, the causes of epilepsy the types of epilepsy um how to diagnose epilepsy and of course of course the treatment of epilepsy so here you can see i've made these questions which are also colored uh, and then i have sort of used the toggle feature to screenshot the answer from the lecture into my notion toggle questions right so this way i can literally test myself every single time i'm revising for the topic so instead of just looking at passive notes and rereading through my notes i go through these questions and basically these serve as sort of flashcards only that they are much better i mean i have made a whole video about why i prefer notion over let's say anki um and i can link to the video in the description so if you're interested in that go watch that as well and the point being that this is much better than note than, than anki in my personal opinion um so i just hide i just screenshot the answers from the pdf and paste them under the toggles and then depending on how well i could i was able to recall the question i marked that in either red or green or like orange for example like orange would be really bad red would red would be okay and green would be good um and that's how I basically make notes notes uh, um for every single topic right so this was neurology so this was basically how i study very simple right i don't have to study any books i'm saving tons of time i just would a lecture take a screenshot from the lecture pdf and use that to make flashcards in the app notion by using the toggle feature and the interesting part here is that now i know literally everything from the lecture so there is no way i'm going to fail my exam because i can i literally know everything that the professor talked about in the lecture yes i might not know a lot of stuff outside of the lecture but i can literally guarantee you that you will easily breeze through your exam if you do this this way and then also solve cases do not forget that cases are very important principle number 3 which i already mentioned in case you skipped the video to this part so that was the first part how i study the second part is how to revise now 
The trick here is to create a retrospective timetable for every single subject. So I have one timetable for neurology and the same goes for um, ophthalmology. I have a separate retrospective timetable here and the same goes for pharmacology and ENT. So let's have a look at the retrospective timetable for um, neurology to see how I revise. Now, here you can see that I made a table, right? Uh, on the y-axis or on, on this um, column, the first column, I have the all the topics that are inside in neurology that I need to cover. And then all the other columns are the num the like the number of revisions. So the retrospective timetable is quite different from a prospective time timetable because when you have a prospective timetable, you're basically planning ahead of time, right? In the future, so, okay, on this day, I will repeat, for example, multiple sclerosis and cerebral tumors on Monday, for example. That's a prospective timetable. However, a retrospective timetable is something I have found to be much more efficient. And here, you basically do your revision first and then you write down the date of the revision. And then in the brackets, you write down how much points or how much, how, what, or the rating for that revision. So from one to five. Five would be great, one would be fail. So you can see here that on the mark on, on the 2nd of March, I revised multiple sclerosis and the brackets I gave myself a two, which means I did not really remember that much of this stuff, right? Um, and the same goes for all the other subjects as well. So I revised them one by one and then write down the date for the revision and the brackets, how much rating I would give to myself depending upon my performance. Now, the second revision is where the in interesting things come start to happen. Now, instead of revising from the first topic and then going down like this in a manner, in like a, in a descending manner, that was the word I was looking for. Um, you can literally just look at the rating that you gave yourself and then prioritize revising that topic. So for example, if I got a one in ALS, that means that I need to revise this first because I literally failed this the first time I revised this. So my first priority would be to revise ALS for my second revision. So I would start here. And then you can see clearly that on the May, on 16th May, I got a five. So I went from a one to a five just by revising, by prioritizing the revision of ALS in one week. Uh, and then you by looking upon the number of marks or the rating, you basically sort of uh, arrange your revisions and that's how you do and over time you can also look at um the progress so i went from a 2 to a 3.5 for multiple sclerosis and so and so forth so that's a retrospective timetable and i've also made a complete video about this if you are interested i'll post the link in the description now let's move on to the third part of the video of my motion setup which is how to catch up on lectures right and for every subject i have a or for every like uh, semester, I have a separate missions timetable. This is what I call a missions timetable. This is also just a chart, a table, uh, where on the left hand side in the column here, I have all the topics from the semester, all the lectures, all the topics. And then I have the date for the topic in the second column. And then I have a column that's called status, which tells me where my sort of how much I have learned this topic, you know, for example, uh, this topic right here, it says not started, which means I have to prioritize this topic really fast because I haven't even started learning this one, right? There's one column for priority because some topics are obviously more important than other topics. So if I have three topics and I haven't started learning any three of them, then I have to look at the priority level. Is it low? Is it medium? Or is it high? And I will obviously start off with a topic that is high priority, which means that topic is more important for, for my exam. Um, and that's how I prioritize, prioritize my learning and catch up on lectures as well. And the last column is just for, for the sake of knowing okay, whether or not this lecture was being recorded in class or not. So that if, I, if there is something I want to know, I can go back and watch the lecture recording. For example, some or mostly lectures are being recorded, but then this one and this one was, were not recorded. So just to give me like a simple picture of what's going on in school. Um, so that was the three parts of my notion setup, how to study, how to revise and how to um, 
catch up on lectures. This entire setup was not really anything complicated at all. Anybody can learn to use this and really make their learning much more efficient and crack the code for MBBS and combine this notion setup with the three principles that I've talked about. And I promise you guys, you will save so much more time and also learn much, much, much more effectively. That's a wrap for today's APs. Now, here is another video which you will surely find useful. And yeah, before you leave, kiss that subscribe button. I'll see you guys on the other side. Take care. Peace.